Uh, humidity may be responsible for why there is a flu season in some parts of the world. Welcome to Microbial Minutes, ASM's update on what's hot in the microbial sciences, the For Everything There Is a Season edition. I'm Julie Wolf, and today we'll be talking about a paper from PNAS, the Proceedings of the National Academies of Science, which shows that humidity can have an effect on the immune system defenses against influenza virus infection. So we all know that influenza is seasonal. We have to get um, in the Northern Hemisphere, get our flu shots in October through December in order to protect ourselves from January through March's heavy hitting flu season. But why is there a flu season? Why is it more commonly passed around in the winter weather? One idea that's been passing around through the uh, influenza community is that there could be an effect of cold, dry air on the influenza virus itself. In fact, studies have shown that moderate to high humidity can inactivate the influenza virus. Uh, and this suggested or, or um, generated the hypothesis that perhaps in the summer, there's less influenza because the influenza virus is inactivated by the presence of the high humidity that is commonly found in the summer. However, just last year, this idea was shown that it might not be as true in an actual infection um, in, in when actual infection occurs, because as people are shedding the virus uh, through their nasal secretions or as they cough, the influenza virus is covered in mucus, uh, and this mucus is going to protect the influenza virus particle regardless of humidity, and this was um, published just last year. So what this group wanted to ask was, well, maybe there's an effect uh, not on the influenza virus particle, but on the host immune system and the ability to defend oneself against influenza virus infection. Uh, and so that's what we're going to be looking at in today's study. They are looking at this study in mice, and it should be noted that the strain of mice that they are using is the MX1 mouse strain, uh, which can recapitulate the important interference-stimulating gene um, or ISG's uh, expression pattern that you see in humans. So this is not done in humans, but it's in a model that closely mimics the immune uh, system response in humans. On the next slide, uh, we'll see that they took different uh, mice, the same, the same uh, mouse strain, but they put them into different conditions. They either let them live in low relative humidity or high relative humidity, uh, and then they infected those mice with influenza virus. Uh, you can see in the survival curve on the right-hand side that the mice that were kept at 20 degrees relative humidity succumbed to their infection more quickly than those that were kept in 50% relative humidity. But how do we know that that's due to a difference in the mouse immune system and not something that happens to the, immune, or to the, to the virus itself? They looked at several measures of innate immunity. One of those, uh, as shown in the lower left-hand side, is the um, ability of the ciliary uh, the ciliated epithelial cells to clear mucus so that let's say if an immune uh, excuse me let's say that if an influenza virus particle lands on one of those ciliated epithelial cells it will be cleared before it has virus has the chance to infect any nearby cells uh, and as you can see at 10 percent relative humidity there is lower flow clearance so they're measuring the flow from these um, uh, ep uh, epithelial cells than in the 50 percent relative humidity. Those cells have a higher flow rate. The, the cilia are more active. They also looked at the ability of these epithelial cells to repair themselves um, after damage that can be incurred through influenza infection. On the lower right-hand side, there are um, some staining of uh, epithelial cells that had come from these different mice, some which were uh, raised in 10% relative humidity and some in 50% relative humidity. And in uninfected mice, there's not really a difference in cell proliferation. So what they're staining for here, that brown indicates a KI67, uh, which is a marker for cell proliferation. Cells, once damaged, have to proliferate uh, to fill in any dead or damaged cells. And of course, when there's no infection, there's no damaged cells. You don't have to have cell proliferation. But in the infected cells, you can see that the uh, those that were stored or the, that lived in 10% relative humidity have a lot less cell proliferation uh, and are less able to uh, repair the damage due to that influenza infection. The group also looked at the uh, ability of uh, mice and their epithelial cells to generate these ISGs, the interferon um, stimulating genes, and there was a lower expression pattern that, or lower expression levels that were seen when the mice were 
um, raised in that lower humidity relative to the higher humidity. All of this adds up to a higher viral burden and more susceptibility uh, because the body is not able to um, protect itself against the virus. So this was um, pu uh, published in PNAS and uh, in the discussion, the authors themselves say that these mechanisms, um, which I've just described to you, may in part underlie the epidemiological correlation of a drop in absolute humidity preceding death from seasonal influenza infection in temperate climates. So this is, of course, going to be more applicable to places where humidity rises and falls, not places where humidity is high all the time, such as in the tropics. Yale produced a video along with a press release, which um, we'll link to down below if you want to see the senior scientist, Akiko uh, Iwasaki, discuss the results and the implications of these results. Uh, she says that it's well known that where humidity drops, a spike in flu incidence uh, and mortality occurs. And if our findings in mice hold up in humans, our study provides a, a possible mechanism underlying the seasonal nature of influenza disease. Now, uh, how exactly the humidity can affect the immune system is a question that is left to be answered, and I'm sure will be the, the focus of future studies, uh, as well as whether this immune effect from humidity, uh, whether that can have an effect on other types of infectious diseases. I'm thinking coronaviruses and rhinoviruses in particular, but are associated with things like the common cold, which are also associated with winter. All right, we've learned that low ambient humidity can impair uh, the immune system against influenza infection. For more updates, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a microbial minutes. I'd like to thank Ray Ortega for production, and thank you for listening. I'm Julie Wolf. I'll be with you next time on Microbial Minutes.